Hello and welcome to this service of worship. All are welcome here, whether you're watching online or you're reading this in print. I am Reverend Cheryl Bolton, and this is the lovely St. Andrew's United Church here in St. Thomas. When a child is born, light shines. When Jesus is born, hope dawns and love arrives. We pray that the newborn Jesus shines upon us. From the cradle and the cross, give us love and life, we pray. Amen. As we begin today, we acknowledge the history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the land of the Indigenous people of this region. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations as we live, work, and worship upon t traditional territory. We are mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. We light this candle as a symbol of the light of Christ, which cannot be held back by distance, which shines in each one of us, no matter where we are. Please join me in the call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of God shines in the darkness. Lift up your eyes and look around. Follow the star wherever it leads. Take the journey that leads to the child. Let your hearts rejoice. Be overwhelmed with joy. We worship the Christ child, the hope of the world. So, can you guess what church holiday we are celebrating today? I'll give you a hint. It involves a star and these three guys. That's right, today we are celebrating Epiphany. Epiphany is traditionally the day that we celebrate the arrival of the wise men. We know the story probably pretty well, but do we know the background information surrounding the wise men, or the magi, or the kings? They go by several names. Wise men from the east knew that because of his star that something significant had taken place. They had a long journey bringing precious, valuable gifts to a special baby. Wanting to do harm to Jesus, King Herod tried to use the wise men to lead them to the baby, but the wise men left no trail, and instead, Joseph and Mary and Jesus were able to safely escape to Egypt. Now, here's the rest of the story that you may not know. The wise men were probably members 
of the order of priests and philosophers called Magi. As the Levites of the East, they performed public religious rites, mediated between God and man, and interpret doctrine and educated the royal family. They were very skilled astronomers, and a star was in their line of specialty. Now, we often hear about the three wise men, but the Bible doesn't actually say the number, but it does mention that they brought three gifts specifically. Gold, obviously what that is, frankincense, which is a kind of gum that is burned for its aroma, and myrrh, which is an expensive perfume often used in burial rituals. Now, the star that they followed was probably no ordinary star. It wouldn't be a comet or a conjunction of planets or even an eclipse. The Magi studied the night sky, and those things would have been more common. This star was special, and it was provided by God. And it didn't behave like any other star that they had ever seen. And it led the wise men right to the Jesus house. Now, evidently, God, for his own purpose, chose to reveal himself through a star and a dream to people who ordinarily were not his followers. Now, when they arrived in Jerusalem, they kind of stood out. They asked all sorts of questions, and they seemed to think that everyone in the Jewish capital city would know about the newborn king of the Jews. Makes sense. However, their questions kind of upset Herod. There was a widespread expectation that an important person was about to appear in Judea. And Herod the Great, well, he had some good qualities for sure. He was courageous and he was good at making executive decisions. But he was also very, very jealous and inhumanely cruel. If Herod thought that the important person would someday take his throne, even if they were a child, well, let's just say he would eliminate the competition. And his subjects feared his cruelty. Now Herod asked the religious leaders of his time and of, of Jerusalem where the long-expected Messiah was to be born. And so they quoted from the Jewish Gospels, Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, informing Herod that Bethlehem was indeed the place. Then, so as not to call too much attention to the child, Herod met with the wise men again, secretly. He asked questions to try to determine the age of the child with the pretense of wanting to worship the child. So he sent the wise men to find the child. Now, many depictions of the visit of the Magi show them presenting gifts to the baby in a stable at the same time as the shepherds. But in fact, many months had already passed since Jesus' birth and Joseph and Mary now lived in a house in Bethlehem. We know that Joseph and Mary traveled the nine kilometers to Jerusalem to follow the custom of presenting Jesus at the temple when he was eight days old. Just after the events in today's story, Herod had all the Jewish boys under the age of two killed to try to wipe out the chance of a new king replacing him. So this kind of indicates that Jesus was about two years old at the time of the Magi's visit. Evidently, the wise men traveled by night, because, you know, they were following a star, to the very house where Jesus lived. Now, heeding God's warning, they went home a different way, though, not through Jerusalem. And the text reads as though the wise men came, worshiped Jesus, left, and Joseph, Mary, and Jesus left a bed about the same night. Egypt was the country where Jesus' ancestors were slaved, and now Egypt 
was to be the place where Jesus would be kept safe from King Herod. We don't know exactly how long he lived there, but he probably wasn't there very long. But his stay there fulfilled the prophecy from Hosea 11, saying that his son, God's son, would come out of Egypt. And now you know the rest of the story. Let us join our thoughts and prayers together in a prayer of confession. O God of goodness and light, illumine a path for us by which we may walk in faithfulness. Too often we have lost our way. Too often we have lived out our pride and stubbornness and failed to turn to you in our times of need. You have given us all that we need to live sober lives in a right mind. Impel us to sin no more and give us a more perfect knowledge of your divine ways in the world. Help us accept 
the forgiveness you offer if we only ask for it. Grant us the opportunity to celebrate this coming year with the faithfulness that we scarcely knew we had in us. Power this celebration through your Holy Spirit, the greatest gift you can offer us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As certain as the dawn follows the night, so is the promise of God's forgiveness and love for all of us. Arise and shine, follow the star, find the light of the world in Bethlehem, and be transformed from darkness into light. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay, pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Messiah was to be born, and they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Their op then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So when was the last time you were interrupted. Perhaps your sleep was interrupted, like on Christmas morning when the kids came running into your room at five o'clock in the morning to open their gifts and announced, it's Christmas, get up, get up, and your sleep is interrupted. Or perhaps you were at your desk last week and you were trying to get things finished up before the holidays and the phone rang and you almost didn't answer it, but you did and you picked it up and it was a telemarketer. Work interrupted. Or maybe you're trying to live your life and this pesky virus comes roaring in and interrupts your entire life. Life interrupted. In his book, Reaching Out, Henry Nowen acknowledges the frustration and even anger that accompanies these constant interruptions. But he says, what if our interruptions are in fact opportunities? What if all the unexpected interruptions are actually in fact invitations to give up old fashioned and outmodeled styles of living and open up to something new. COVID certainly has off offered us that invitation, hasn't it? We've learned to do things differently. We've learned to do online worship when need be. We've learned to wear masks and to be safe and to be socially distanced.
Instead of viewing these interruptions as things that keep us from our work or our ministry, how would we be different if we viewed the interruptions as opportunities for ministry? I like to think that's what we've been doing for the last two years. Most of the time, interruptions are just minor annoyances that temporarily distract us from what we're trying to do. And in these cases, Nowlin's thoughts help me manage the small interruptions. But what about those more serious interruptions? The ones that rock our world. There you are at your desk, trying hard to get that report finished when the boss pops in. Perhaps he regretfully informs you that due to downsizing, your job has been outsourced overseas. Or perhaps it's a, a good year and you've been promised promoted to the headquarters, which is half a continent away. Major life interruptions. Or are they opportunity for personal growth and ministry? Maybe you've worked hard and saved for years to buy and pay off your home. And then one late summer day, the weatherman warns of a Category 5 hurricane headed your way. Two days later, everything you own is gone. Major life interruptions. Or is it an opportunity for personal growth and ministry? Imagine that you are one of the main characters in our gospel text this morning. Imagine that you are Mary or Joseph, and your wedding plans are put on hold, and your standing in the community is threatened when Mary becomes pregnant before you are married. Imagine the response from family and friends when you claim from the beginning that this child is the future Messiah, fathered by the Holy Spirit. And if that's not enough, the government requires you to travel to Bethlehem for a census count late in Mary's pregnancy. The city is overcrowded, you're weary, your short-tempered travelers are everywhere, and all the inns have posted no vacancy signs. And labor begins. Without proper, proper medical help or without the support of family and friends, you deliver your son in an unheated, unsanitary barn. Talk about life interrupted. Or, is it an opportunity for personal growth in ministry? And what about those shepherds? Picture the scene with me, if you will. Twilight is long gone, and there's no moon this night. The darkness, inky black, all-encompassing, settles over the fields, and sleepy shepherds take up strategic positions among their slumbering flock, trying to remain alert to any signs of danger. All of a sudden, the sky explodes with light and the angel of the Lord appears to them announcing the birth of the Messiah, the Savior, and telling them to go and find him. Sleep, work, and life interrupted. Or, is this a once-in-a-lifetime chance to worship the newborn king? And what about those wise men? Here they are, just studying the stars at night, minding their own business, doing their job, and suddenly this new star appears, and they're filled, called to follow that star. And it's not just an overnight journey. We're talking months and years of travel. Life interrupted. As an adult, Jesus has a habit of breaking into the lives unexpectedly. Jesus called fishermen from their nets, 
a tax collector from his office, work interrupted, or an opportunity to embark on a whole new path. Jesus spoke to the woman at the well and dealt with local religious leaders who were about to stone the woman caught in adultery. Life interrupted, or an opportunity for two marginalized women to receive grace and a second chance to live their lives with wholeness and dignity. Jesus interrupted the status quo and the security of centuries of established religious practices when he ushered in the kingdom of God among us. Jesus interrupted those who tried to silence him by executing him, and he interrupted the power of evil by overcoming death and rising again from the dead. Jesus is still about the business of breaking into lives today. For some of us, we hear the call like the shepherd. I'm bringing you the news of great joy for all people to for you today. Born this day, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And we arrive at the manger in amazement to worship our King. And we return to work that God has already called us to do, but our hearts are changed forever. God may be calling some of us from our offices or from fishing nets, whatever they may be, to follow Jesus on a whole new vocational path. God may be calling others of us to speak on behalf of those for whom, for whatever reason, cannot speak for themselves or defend themselves. And still others of us may be called on to stand against the status quo against those who can no longer see interruptions as possibilities for growth and ministry. So when was the last time that you were interrupted? And how did you look at it? Is it an interruption? Or is it full of possibilities? something to think about in this new year. God bless.
Let us join our hearts together in a prayer of community for thanksgiving and concern. Lord of bright and abiding light, you have shown us in the person of Jesus, your son, a bright new way to live. You have poured your light into the world and have asked us to live in the light rather than run and hide in the darkness of doubt and despair. You promise to be our light in all of our days and ask us to place our trust in you. The journey in this light is risky. It means we have to be very serious about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. In this new year, we bring to you the names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. They struggle with ill health, economic hardship, broken and damaged relationships, loss of loved ones, and anxiety. We place them in your care. Let your light shine on them bringing healing and hope, and help us to be bearers of that light in all that you do. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me in this service of worship today. and I pray that you found the light of Christ in this service of worship, and may it follow you today and always. I'd like to say a special thank you to Lynn and Brian Sloan for their beautiful accompaniment this week for our hymns. We're very lucky indeed that they have chosen to let their light shine with us. And now, once you were in darkness, but now, by the grace of God, you have seen the light and have become the light. The grace of God will lead you by the light of the one whom the Magi worshipped. Live as children of God's light. Amen. Amen. Take care. We'll see you next week.